ज्योति स्टार्ट प्लीज ओके ज्योति गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन इन फॉर्मल वेबिनार टीम वेलकम्स ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु आर जॉइंड अस ऑन Zoom YouTube Facebook Insta एंड ऑल अदर सोशल प्लेटफॉर्म्स टुडे वी हैव बीन जॉइंड बाय डॉक्टर प्रिया सिंगा हु विल गाइड अस थ्रू विक्टिम कंपनसेशन स्कीम शी हैज कंप्लीटेड हर डिग्री ऑफ लॉ from UILS Punjab University Chandigarh she did her masters in law as gold medalist from Punjabi University Patiala she added another feather by clearing the UGC net JRF in her first year of LLM itself dr priya completed her phd and received her doctorate from Punjab University Chandigarh in 2018 She has also done a diploma in human rights from Indian Institute of Human Rights New Delhi. She presented numerous research papers on various aspects of law at different forums. Since 2016 she has been working as assistant professor at University Institute of Legal Studies Punjab University Chandigarh which is her alma mater. As the topic for today's discussion is victim compensation scheme so the concept of compensation is not new to india and existed in more developed sense in past than in present system manu in manu smriti chapter 8 while dealing with various offenses and their punishments clearly says in verse 287 angao peed nayam chogran shuni teus tatha samuthan vayam dapya sarv dandam at apiva if a limb is injured a wound is caused or blood flows the assailant shall be made to pay to the sufferer the expenses of the cure or the whole both the usual amercement and the expenses of the cure as a fine to the king he further in verse 288 says dravyani hinsyad yo yasya gyanato agyanato api उत्पादेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजेजे
357A was added by the legislator in CRPC in 2009 to fulfill these gaps. So let's welcome our distinguished guest, Dr. Priya Sangla, lecturer at UILS Punjab University, Chandigarh, to understand the concept of victim compensation scheme in detail. I welcome Dr. Priya Sangla. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I uh, sincerely am very grateful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So today we, we will be talking about the topic Victim Compensation Scheme in India and its future. Starting with victim. Who is a victim? Victim wo hota hai jiske jiske saath offense hua hai jiske upar offense hua hai jisko loss hua hai due to the offense but agar hum apne criminal justice system mein dekhte hain victim ke liye koi khaas jagah nahi hai victim is considered as mere informant mere witness in criminal trials assisting the state in its endeavor to punish the offender but as the system has changed, as the trend has changed, now the victim is becoming the focal point of our criminal justice system. But this journey of becoming part of getting justice in the criminal justice system in India was never a bed of roses for the victim. Earlier, the entire focus of the criminal justice system was on the offender only, to protect his rights, to punish him, and thereby bring about his reformation and rehabilitation with all the resources and goodwills available like courts and other agencies, the victims, victims' rights and victims' uh, interest was often left behind with little or no assistance coming his way. The violation of victims' rights, the invasion of his dignity, the actual loss incurred by him never constituted matters of concern for anyone but himself. Strange but true, justice fails to redress the victim. In fact, it aggravates the injustice by focusing solely on the offender and sidelining the victim's minimum needs and requirements. In simple words, victim was a forgotten party to the criminal justice system. It was the last few decades only. However, the system witnessed groundbreaking reforms in its approach nationally as well as internationally with reforms not only in statutory laws, but also even in judicial approach towards the victim of crime. Victim compensation is one of the major aspects in reparation of the harm or injury caused to the victim due to the crime. Monetary assistance is one way or the other always benefits the victim in mitigation of their suffering. It was rightly stated by Freckleton, who is an Australian barrister and jurist in 2001 that the purpose of victim compensation is to give him some solace for the injury sustained, whether or not culprit is brought to the book and whether or not the culprit might otherwise be liable to him. This concept of victim compensation, which, which is the topic today, is not new to India. As Jyoti Ma'am has also mentioned it, in our ancient history also there is uh, mentioning about victim compensation. Author of the book, General Principles of Hindu Jurisprudence, Priya Nath Sen has observed that in ancient times, it was the duty of the king who could not recover stolen article of his people or price of them from the offender to pay the price to the owner from his own treasury. Even in Hindu law during Sutra period, awarding of compensation was treated as royal right. As already mentioned by Jyoti ma'am also, 
in law of manu chapter 8 the offender was to pay compensation and expenses of cure in case of injuries to the victim whereas this modern day emergence of idea of victim compensation commenced only in 1950s by the british magistrate and social reformer margaret fry she advocated for inclusion of victim compensation as a feature of criminal justice system in 1960s the victimology movement made way for monetary compensation canada and several states in us began providing victim compensation and thereby encourage participation in criminal prosecutions then in 1980s the movement raised its pace in 1985 the un general assembly unanimously adopted the un declaration on basic principles of justice for victims and abuse of power which further made way for specific rights and entitlements of victims of crime including the right to compensation now i'll be dealing with the evolution of victimology in india what is the legal framework in india and how it emerged in india the right of a victim receiving compensation was first recognized in old code of crpc that is 1890a which was available only where a substantive sentence of fine was imposed and limited to the amount of fine actually realized however this provision was very sparingly invoked by the courts a similar provision is inserted in the new code of crpc 1973 as well under section 357 which specifically empowers a court imposing a sentence of fine or a sentence of which fine forms a part to order payment of compensation out of the fine recovered to the victim however such compensation compensation to victims can be awarded only when substantive sentence is imposed of which fine forms a part and not in cases of acquittal or discharge further under section 357 clause 3 of crpc 1973 the court is empowered to award compensation for loss or injury suffered by a person even in cases where the fine does not form a part of the sentence in other words the power to award compensation under section 357 is not ancillary to other sentence but it is additional to it there is also no limit on the amount of uh, of the fine or compensation that may be awarded under the section in spite of all these provisions the justice to victim could not be done since the power under section 357 of the court is discretionary and there has been general reluctance general uh, reluctance on the part of the courts to exercise this power under section 357 for the benefits of the victim more than 4 decades ago in the case of manu ram versus union of india 1981 justice krishna ayer pointed out this and supreme court reiterated the words of justice krishna ayer in the case of ankur shivaji gaikwad versus state of maharashtra in 2014 that it appears to us that the provision confers a duty on the courts to apply it its mind to the question of awarding compensation in every criminal case the power to award compensation intended to reassure the victim that he or she is not forgotten in the criminal justice system another apt question regarding the inefficiency of this provision was raised by supreme court in the case of rohtash versus state of haryana 2008 that should justice to the victim depend on the punishment of the guilty 
and should they have to wait to get justice till such time that the handicaps in the system which result in large scale acquittals of guilty are removed so these were the major questions which were raised by the courts regarding the inefficiency of this very section even if we look into the indian constitution there is no specific provision for the victims but the elements of it can be found under article 41 which is a directive principle of state policy and lays down the duty of state to secure the right to public assistance in uh, the right to public assistance in cases of disablement and in other cases of undeserved want but there is no as a specific provision for the same then as early as in 1983 the supreme court recognized the petitioners right to compensation as an integral part of article 21 that is right to life and personal liberty in the case of rudal shah versus state of bihar in which the petitioner was granted compensation for illegal detention in several cases thereafter the apex court has repeated its order making compensation an integral aspect of right to life cases like bheem singh versus state of jammu and kashmir 1985 then dr jacob george versus state of kerala 1994 then manju bhatia versus state of kerala uh, manju bhatia versus ndmc 1998 the people versus police commissioner delhi 1996 and so on recently in this month only there is a, a pi filed by a young lawyer a young law student actually uh, yashkiri versus union of india before the supreme court that the compensation to the victims of the system who were wrongly in incarcerated and later acquitted that should be granted so this is how the supreme court is actively participating in widening the scope of victim compensation in india besides this there are number of other legislations also which provide for the compensation to the victim either by the trial court or by specially set up claims tribunals like bhopal gas leak disaster processing of claims act 1985 then we have consumer protection act 1986 fatal accidents act 1855 motor vehicles act 1988 probation of offenders act 1958 protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 then sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention protection and redress the lack 2013 and so on in crpc also we have other provisions which are relating to the compensation like section 358 359 250 which deals with the compensation to the victims of groundless arrest and malicious prosecution despite of all these provisions which have which we have discussed till now the victims were still at the mercy of courts to get compensated for the loss suffered by them and also on the underprivileged offenders who generally were unable to fulfill the same therefore it was much needed that a special and exclusive statutory scheme for victim compensation must be there in our legal framework that is why finally in the year of 2008 with an amendment in crpc section 357a was inserted with the recommendation of malimath committee in 2009 this section 357a came into being in which victim compensation scheme was introduced the scheme made way for an institutionalized payment of compensation to the victim by the state for any loss or injury caused to him by the offender 
the responsibility has been imposed on the states to create and maintain a fund for the purpose by virtue of this section the compensation can even be paid to the victims where the compensation paid by the accused is either inadequate or even where the offender is not being traced or identified or acquitted or discharged so this provision has made this possible that the victims of the offense where the offender is not identified or he, he is acquitted or he is discharged even then the victim can get the compensation then further in 357b which was inserted by 2013 criminal amendment act which specifically provides that in cases of acid attack and gang rape the compensation paid by state in above scheme shall be in addition to the payment of fine to the victim under the respective sections of ipc that is 326a and 376d such payment may be allowed on specific re recommendation of the court in addition to the compensation payable under section 357 crpc and also the victim can apply for this for this compensation under the scheme the district's legal services authority or state legal services authority has been authorized to decide the amount of compensation to be awarded to victims under the scheme subject to the maximum limit prescribed by the state in addition to the compensation 357a also attempts to respond to the immediate needs to the victims for first aid or medical benefits as well as any other interim relief as may be required pursuant to this legislative amendment the states notified the scheme though after an initial reluctance and prodding by the courts till date almost all the states and uts have set up the scheme to provide for payment of compensation and other reliefs to the victim or their dependents now i will be discussing the provisions of victim compensation scheme in various states in india and thereby i will be comparing their scope and efficacy and the gaps in those schemes first of all i will i would like to talk about the object of the scheme all the states have put forward one simple object for providing funds for compensation to the victims or their dependents who have suffered loss or injury as a result of the crime and who require rehabilitation now this object of all the uh, all state schemes is in tune with section 357a however in odisha the scheme is more broad based because there are two objectives uh, in that scheme which uh, first one is to provide financial assistance to the victims and second is to support services such as shelter counseling medical aid legal assistance education and vocational training depending upon the needs of the victim thus odisha is concerned uh, thus so far as odisha is concerned the victim compensation scheme is not merely to provide compensation to the victims but also makes an effort to provide holistic uh, support to these victims now if we talk about the definition of victim in these schemes in these state schemes almost in every state the victim is defined as the person who has suffered loss or injury as a result of the crime and who requires rehabilitation except in the state of assam and himachal pradesh where it is mentioned that the victim is a person about loss or injury caused by reason of the act or omission for which the accused person has been charged 
now this is the line with the def this line in the definition of victim is same as in section 2 wa of crpc which defines victim uh, in which the words are used has been charged now the words used has been charged indicate here that the offense has been investigated accused identified and thereupon the court has proceeded to charge the accused in accordance with the provisions of crpc however section 357a if we look into the section 357a of the court it is intended to assist assist even those victims for whom the case could not proceed for want of identification of the accused hence the definition of victim is somewhat does not seem to be in line with the scope of the scheme then the term victim is also extended and amended in crpc also to include dependent family members into the definition delhi high court in the case of chhatar singh versus subhash in 2011 even included the legal hairs in the definition of victim but this definition of uh, but this inclusion of legal hairs in the definition was overruled by the larger bank, uh, bench of delhi high court uh, in which they held that it is not necessary for all the legal hairs to undergo emotional harm or experience injury due to the crime or even have a motivation to take part in all legal hazards or of justice system therefore the supreme court in the case of tata steel limited versus tata new products 2014 categorically held that for the purposes of victim compensation scheme only those dependents who have suffered loss or injury due to the crime and need rehabilitation are eligible and the legal here do not have anything to do under section 357a then another gap in the definition is of rehabilitation rehabilitation is not defined anywhere in any state scheme which is another gap of uh, in the application of these schemes if we talk about the implementation authority under the scheme the main implementation authority under the schemes is district legal services authority and state legal services authority the constitution of the committee at the state level includes chief justice of the high court along with serving or retired judge of the respective high courts as well as other members nominated by the government in consultation with the chief justice of the high court at the district level it is chaired by district judge of the respective district if we talk about the monitoring body there is no as such monitoring body in any of the state schemes but in the in the state of tamil nadu the home prohibition and excise department has been designated as a nodal department for regulating administering and monitoring the scheme in the state and in also uh, madhya pradesh also an elaborative provisions for the purposes of monitoring the scheme has been laid down two committees has been constituted in madhya pradesh for the monitoring purpose uh, one is state level committee and other is district level committee other than this even in bihar the law department has been designated as nodal agency further if we talk about eligibility criteria for the compensation how a victim can the can get the compensation in the scheme the scheme has laid down the eligibility for award of compensation the basic condition for grant of compensation is that the victim must have suffered loss or injury causing substantial loss to the income of the family making it difficult to make both ends meet or has to spend beyond his means on med medical treatment 
of mental or physical injury here the word substantial indicates considerable or extensive therefore only only in cases where victim finds it extremely difficult to meet the expenses arising from the crime is entitled to compensation in other cases he is not when it comes to the application of the scheme this is one of the major drawbacks of the scheme because in most of the cases victims are not able to prove the substantial loss so that is why they could not claim the compensation under the schemes if we come to the procedure about the procedure for grant of compensation the states has kept it very simple to help the victim where a recommendation is received from the court or an application is made by the victim the district legal services authority or state legal services authority has to examine and verify the facts raised in the claim and after due inquiry they decide on the grant of compensation it is a time bound procedure with most states specifying 2 months as a statutory period except arunachal pradesh which provides for 30 days time to decide the claim if we talk about delhi or goa they provide the documents and materials as well which are to be submitted to support the application whereas in other states there is no as such mention about the documents categorically Uh, uh which are needed to uh, file with the application now criteria for compensation as such no rule or guidelines has been laid for determining the amount of compensation an upper limit has been set by the states for each offense and the amount must not exceed that amount but delhi in delhi compensation scheme they have laid down certain factors to be considered while awarding compensation those are gravity of the offense on which the uh, legal services authority can decide the amount of compensation these are the grounds like gravity of the uh, offense severity of mental physical harm of the injury expenditure incurred on medical treatment loss of educational opportunity loss of employment relationship of offender and victim whether the crime was isolated incident or series of incidents whether victim pregnant or contracted std or hiv or disabled as a result of the offense financial condition of the victim in case of death age income number of dependents etc of the disease any other factor which may be considered just or sufficient by district legal services authority or state legal services authority now similar factors have been laid down in up also to decide the amount of compensation now talking about the interim relief all states except delhi have provided for grant of interim relief to the victims of crime generally such relief includes medical support or first aid facility as well as any other relief that may be required in the situation thereby including financial assistance as well for victims of acid attack some states gujarat and tamil nadu have specifically provided for 1 lakh grant immediate within 15 days of the reporting of the crime however for the grant of interim relief certificate from the officer in charge of the police station or magistrate is necessary which may prove to be daunting to the victim again uh, this is one of the reasons that uh, the compensation scheme is not that successful because of the uh, documents because of the certificates which the victim has to uh, supply to the authorities it is a very uh, cumbersome procedure then coming to the refusal of the application majority of the states have not laid down the grounds 
on which an application for award of compensation may be rejected nevertheless it may be analyzed that where the authority is uh, likely to reject the same it is for the uh, material submitted for consideration of application do not support the claim in those cases the authorities can even reject the application uh, in the states of goa himachal pradesh karnataka and madhya pradesh they have even specifically mentioned the grounds on which the application can be rejected those grounds are like non reporting of the crime lack of cooperation with the police or court absence of reasonable assistance to the authorities rejection of previous application for same crime furnishing false information or evidence making false or vexatious complaint turning hostile in the court alleged crime collusive in nature eligibility of victim does not justify an award as may be seen apart from false cases where rejection is justified application may also be refused for want of cooperation or assistance on the part of the victim a victim of crime such as rape acid attack or trafficking may be under serious psychological trauma so how the authorities can expect any kind of assistance from such victims so this is also a gap in the scheme that uh, their application can be rejected on the basis of non cooperation so where the victims have undergone the mental agony and mental uh, trauma because of the uh, crimes like rape gang rape and uh, trafficking acid attack how the uh, law expect them to cooperate with the authorities if we talk about the period of limitation the scheme lays down that the period within which a claim shall be entertained by the authority this period generally ranges from 6 months to 1 year after the date of commission of the crime for most of the states except delhi in delhi it is set for 3 years and in gujarat there are no period set for mentioned in the victim compensation scheme if we talk about appeal yes appeal right is there in almost all the states except uh, except in uh, uh, delhi and gujarat they have no appeal provision and in madhya pradesh there is uh, two level of appeal first is to uh, state legal services authority and second can be to the home department government of madhya pradesh within 30 days now the major matter of concern is quantum of compensation the amount of compensation decided by the states indicate a wide degree of discrepancy with compensation as low as 25000 in chatisgarh to 50000 in bihar and 150000 in odisha in case of rape whereas in goa it has been fixed as 10 lakhs for rape victims in case of rape of minor the amount varies from rupees 50000 lakhs in madhya pradesh in cases of loss or injury causing severe mental agony in offenses of kidnapping human trafficking different states states have prescribed varying limits some as low as 10000 as like in arunachal pradesh to others as high as 10 lakhs in goa for victims of acid attack the compensation has generally been fixed between 1 lakh to 3 lakhs and in delhi it has been fixed from 3 lakhs to 7 lakhs some states kept the amount glaringly low like bihar 25000 and himachal pradesh 50000 chatisgarh and himachal pradesh have quantified the cost of rehabilitation at rupees 20000 to 50000 respectively so this is how the various state have a uh, different amount of compensation this concern was also 
raised by Supreme Court in the case of Tekan versus State of Chhattisgarh, 2016, in which the Supreme Court raised this issue and opined that it is clear that no uniform practice is being followed in providing compensation to the rape victim for the offense and her rehabilitation. This practice of giving different amount ranging from 20,000 to 10 lakhs for the offense of rape under section 357A needs to be introspected by all states and UTs. They should consider and formulate a uniform scheme, especially for rape victim in light of the scheme in the state of Goa. So as a result, and looking into the wide discrepancy in quantum of compensation, Center came up with Central Victim Compensation Fund Guidelines 2015, in which they tried to reduce the disparities across states and encourage states to effectively implement the victim compensation scheme. Under the guidelines, an amount of 200 crores has been sanctioned as initial corpus fund. Expenditure incurred by states may be reimbursed from the central fund. A uniform minimum amount of compensation has been determined for all the states, including for rehab, uh, including three lakhs for acid attacks and rape victims, and one lakh for rehabilitation for victims of human trafficking. So with this, uh, the center has provided with minimum compensation, which is to be granted in various offenses. And the state has, states, states have uh, uh, amended the scheme in light of these guidelines, except Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Chhattisgarh, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and UP. So these are these were the various provisions of various state schemes which I have discussed with you all. And now I would like to uh, make some recommendations from my side to strengthen the structure of criminal justice system to the victims. First and the foremost recommendation which I want to make is for the success of the scheme is that all the states must enforce a uniform scheme for deciding the grounds and amount paid as compensation. As we have already uh, discussed, jo kafi states may bohat hi alag alag compensation amount diya jata hai. It is as low as 10,000, it is as high as 10 lakh. So, uh, according to me, there must be some criteria to decide the same, there must be some uniform guidelines for the same. Second recommendation I want to make is the authorities must be empathetic to the pain and agony of the victims of crime and their consequent necessities and difficulties. Accordingly, orders must be made to provide the best deal to the victim whereby he or she is able to rehabilitate and re-socialize for a dignified living. Thirdly, the procedures must be more simple and imposition of burden on victims to secure certificates, provide documents, etc. should be reduced as far as possible. Fourthly, interim relief to the victims must be provided, especially in the cases of gang rapes, acid attacks, etc. with the least emphasis on formalities and technical procedures. Fifthly, very important, which is the amount set by the states must be in tune with the prevailing cost of living, medical treatment and psychological assistance. There is a lot of gap between the, uh, the amount they set and the actually prevailing conditions, the cost of living, the medical treatment. The, the, there is a lot of gap between the both. Then speedy disposal of the claim application is another requirement for the success of the scheme. Talking about the administrative mechanism, it must also be strengthened and the primary authority, which is now the district legal services authority and state legal services authority, it must be a, a multi-sectoral 
containing police officials also health officials also and an expert in victimology also and jo uh, state legal service authority or uh, डिस्ट्रिक्ट लीगल सर्विस अथॉरिटी है इनको एपिलेट फंक्शन देने चाहिए देन अ सेपरेट अथॉरिटी शुड बी क्रिएटेड टू मॉनिटर द होल प्रोसेस एंड ऑल्सो द अमाउंट ऑफ कॉम्पनसेशन वेदर ग्रांटेड अप्रोप्रिएटली और नॉट देन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ विक्टिम विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेफिनेशन ऑफ विक्टिम इन सेक्शन टू डब्ल्यू ए ऑफ सी आर पी सी एंड अंडर स्कीम आर नॉट इन ट्यून which is the major problem in the application of the scheme in uh, in if we see in section 2 w a of crpc it mention the word charge which means the uh, proceed the accused must be identified the proceedings must be started against him whereas in 357 a such word is not used and and the compensation is given to the victim even in the cases where the accused is not uh, identified or he is discharged or he is acquitted so in those cases also the victim is given the compensation agar dekha jaye victim is a victim whether the accused has been identified or not or whether he is acquitted or discharged till the person has suffered the loss so he must be compensated in all the uh, consequences to conclude i would reiterate the words of apex court no compensation can be adequate or can it be of any respite of the victim but as the state failed in protecting such serious violation of victims fundamental rights it now becomes the duty of the state to provide compensation which may help the victim to rehabilitate the humiliation or reputation that is snuffed out cannot be recompensed but then monetary compensation will at least provide him with some solace thank you so much everyone for listening me with this patience and uh, i hope uh, i i have done the justice to the topic thank you so much over to you uh, padan sir ruchita haan ji thank you so much ma'am uh, now I, there's a question answer session so i'll ask the participants to ask their questions so there was a first query from mr padam khan ji okay. so you can have the question directly to the speaker <laughs> actually uh, dr priya it is a wonderful uh, lecture uh, you have explained yes. everything about this scheme yes sir. but still my query would be whether uh, sometime what happens uh, like you said crimes happen like gang rape or rape happens and in political hustles the leaders go there and in some some chief minister or some minister or even some mp or mla announces that i will give 5 lakhs rupees uh, to the victim so uh, my question is whether the victim uh, if she takes that amount if 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 uh, unfortunately she receives that amount uh, will she be able to receive yes, the compensation there is no as, as such well? uh, bar on the uh, scheme that agar aapko kahi aur se aise koi bhi fund mein से कोई भी आपको मिल गई है तो आप यहाँ पे क्लेम नहीं कर सकते सो देर इज नो एज सच बार इन दिस स्कीम एंड इवन सर इन सेंट्रल विक्टिम कॉम्पनसेशन स्कीम गाइडलाइंस दे हैव इवन कैप्ट द प्रोविजन फॉर पब्लिक टू टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन द फंड इवन दे हैव कैप्ट दिस प्रोविजन थैंक यू सो मच मैम करण भारद्वाज Can you answer your question? Yes, ma'am. My uh, question to the speaker is that often we have seen that in cases pertaining to the asset attacks, the principal loss to the girl is with regard to her employment. I have personally come across a matter wherein, though she was given an aid of two lakh rupees by the administration under the victim compensation scheme, but she narrated an ordeal that whenever she appears in an interview. Uh, people initially call her shortlist her but when she confronts when she's actually there people do not like to engage a person because of reasons which is known to all of us 
and it's little stigmatic also uh, my question to the speaker is that while in her research she has ever come across a situation where uh, following the principles of victim compensation scheme the states have come up with some uh, uh, say a kind of a compassionate appointment to these people uh, to address their grievances because they are basically redundant uh, left redundant for any job after the acid attack right sir uh, in the i would like to uh, mention here the case lakshmi versus union of india which is a very fa famous acid attack case that is of 2015 in that case also supreme court uh, expressed the concern about the security and safety emphasized merely providing interim measure may not be enough and long term rehabilitation is necessary so supreme court ne bhi apna concern is jo aapne abhi bola hai ki unka employment chala jata hai it's a major concern but there is no as such uh, as far as i know there is no as such uh, compassionate employment given to such uh, victims of rape they uh, the schemes only provide for the monetary compensation but supreme court mm. yes has in the case of lakshmi versus union of india uh, they uh, they have uh, uh, raised the concern about this because uh, sirf ek time a compensation dena is not enough it should be uh, uh, something which is uh, which is for lifetime so the uh, right right thank you thank you ma'am uh, the next query is from mr shubham gupta he has raised his hand uh, greetings ma'am uh ma'am my question to you is the same as the uh, person who asked before that what happens is a victim faces social he becomes uh, she becomes a social outcast in reality so how can we tackle that problem because financial position is one thing but what affects more according to me is the being a social uh, it's a social problem so sorry. how do we uh, sorry the voice is distorted i can't hear Uh, Shubham ji, we are not getting your voice. The question is, what about what about the social outcasting of the victim? How could that be compensated? Yes, sir. So uh, you are very right. Even Supreme Court in various cases has raised the same concern. But the uh, scheme provides only for monetary compensation. Yes, uh, this can be recommend. This can be also a recommendation. to uh, provide as uh, uh, karan bhadwaj sir has also pointed out some uh, there must be some provisions for compassionate job for such victims so this can be a, a good step by the state to rehabilitate socially rehabilitate such it, there must be something that the identity of the victim was, uh, is not disclosed like in rape cases right. always but in in some other cases uh, whether identity is uh, I, i don't i don't think it will be disclosed so to save this thing also for social out yes sir this can be done yes, yeah. so any other queries uh, there is a again our karan bhagwaj has sir raised no no <laughs> that was uh, okay, i'm so that sorry that was my mistake right, right. no yes, no yes. issues at all i'll i'll like to ask a question ma'am i like to ask a question ma'am Uh, ma'am hello ma'am uh, really nice sir. talk on uh, this ma'am thank you so much hello, my sir. question is they generally say that money is not the cure to all the evils but money definitely helps you going through that trauma at least gives you a support so is there any observation in the any of judgment right. to say that the amount being offered under this victim compensation scheme at least by most of the states as you observed is too paltry and it should be increased any measures to do that anything to do that ma'am anything to do what uh, sorry to I increase the compensation uh, i'm sorry the compensation i'm saying is that as you've observed in most of the states is too less too paltry so yes. is there any observation by the courts or any move to say that at least it should be enhanced to make the life of the victim a little comfortable to go through the trauma something like that so uh, that's totally upon the state to maintain the funds uh, for this even uh, as i told you center uh, victim compensation scheme fund mein ek uh, public funds ke liye bhi uh, ek uh, provision aayi hai jisme public can also contribute to the fund so uh, i don't think so this how it can be okay thank you thank you 
basically uh, priya we see that people straight away sometimes file repetition in high court i right. say right sir to to uh, basically raising the grievance and high court awards compensation and it's a good compensation in some cases high court even awards 10 lakh rupees i have seen uh, but uh, then why would people opt for this scheme right. this scheme is this scheme is uh, um, it not that attractive mm -hmm. in an asset attack probably the cost of treatment why, why is much higher people straight away go to high court like high court yes, yes. exactly in for asset yes. attack yes. victim the cost of treatment must will be much much higher than what is being offered so this scheme for a writ mean, petition uh, the procedure here is very simple sir vishal voice is tricky now uh, basically vishal is saying that uh, vishal uh, may, may i say something may i say ha yes, yes. uh vishal uh, in one case uh, uh, i was the congress going before justice rajan gupta okay in that case a state has undertaken to get the every treatment uh, all the treatment of that uh, lady mm -hmm. uh to pay the all the expenses in that case she was go undergoing treatment in medanta gurgaon so every time uh, she was coming with a bill and the state was paying that bill so it can be done i think there is some provision in the scheme i am not a, a fully aware uh, under what provision they were paying or was there any order but we were paying the entire amount whatever bill she was bringing that was paid entirely by the state yes sir there is so a, as far as there is treatment is concerned that can be done by the state medical treatment provision is there even in 357 b specifically lays down about that the 357 c also specifically lays about that a 2013 amendment act in which medical treatment to the victim can also be provided under the scheme if the moderator permits me uh, i also intend to uh, add on to this conversation specifically in the light of the asset attack victims does the treatment also includes the entire plastic surgeries and other events which takes place to normalize uh, as far as possible though it's not 100% possible to make things possible for the asset victim because the case which i came across according to her she spent approximately about 2 12 lakhs to 14 lakh rupees on various subsequent face surgeries and she has undergone as many as 30 to 40 surgeries over a span of last 4 years but no way close to it so uh, my even i am addressing to mr vishal garg also uh, was it all taken care of and or the yes yes yes, yes. In, in that particular case in that particular case everything was being, being taken care of right that's a welcome step i would say if that can be done it yes. will be a huge help uh, uh, in fact uh, in a reported that Uh, she will be uh, he will be paying the entire money from uh, government account and they were sending okay. the bill and he, every time the fit was that this was the bill and we have paid this that's a huge that's a huge yes. encouragement i would say if that can be taken care of much of their woes can be taken care of thank you thank you आर पी सी so basic purpose of this scheme is that like in 357 the court were empowered to give compensation but those compensation come after the judgment is passed so the uh, uh, legislature come came with this uh, 357a so that the state can make scheme to give interim compensations during the course of trial otherwise also uh, state can take cognizance uh, uh, of any case and can grant any uh, amount to any person but these schemes are just like a minimum uh, guaranteed program that minimum uh, this amount will be given to a person in case he or she is in litigation in certain kind of crimes so that is why these schemes doesn't give too much of amount to the person because it is only for the moderate 
amount which has to be paid during the trial. When the trial is over, then under 357, the court is empowered to give whatever court deems appropriate as a compensation. It is only under 357A that these schemes have been formulated by the various states. Uh, I think that I am right, uh, Dr. Priya. Although... Sir, this is not just for the interim or during the trial. It is after the okay. uh, monetary compensation like victim ko milti hai after the... So basically, kya hai ye schemes? Uh, pehle kya issue tha 357 mein? Agar acquittal ho jata tha kisi ka, ya fir discharge ho jata tha, ya identify nahi ho pa tha, tab victim ko koi compensation nahi mil pa thi 357 mein. So that is why 357A may specifically bola gaya ki agar discharge bhi ho jata hai, quit bhi ho jata hai, toh bhi victim ko compensation milegi. The uh, thing you are saying is interim relief. So wo, it's an additional provision in 357A. Th that is not the only compensation under 357A. No, no. What I was trying to say is that these schemes have been created by the all these states. Yes, sir. Under 357A. Yes, sir. Will the power come from 357A? 357A, yes, sir. So, so both, the, why... both, both the compensation are provided, yes. interim also, and otherwise also, yes. once the uh, offense is concluded, once the trial is concluded. So, once whatever the... the uh, once the trial is concluded, the judgment yes. is passed. Hans. So, in case the accused accused is uh, found guilty, Hans then obviously sir. the court can ask accused to give amount of compensation under 357. 357. That is in addition in case, to this. Yes. In case yes. he is acquitted, then also the compensation can be granted by yes, the state, state. Yes. under 357. Exactly. And sir. that is why this, this scheme has been uh, notified under yes, 357. Sir. Right, sir. Right. Thank you. So, both the compensations can be given. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Priya. I want to thank you on the behalf of Informal's webinar team for putting together today's webinar. And uh, as you having built a long career in the legal department or legal industry, you can say I appreciate and value your experience, your talent and insight in this area. And uh, we are highly grateful and I definitely appreciate the topic you have taken uh, in a vast way today. First of all, you have very well explained about what the victim, who the victim is actually. So uh, a very good start of the topic. Later on, we were told about the monetary benefits, uh, the solace when the victim got after getting the monetary benefit. Later on, uh, how it has been evolved through the ancient times. Since the ancient times, we are having this kind of facility in our act. So uh, in our Hindu law, you can say. And after that, you have very well explained about the amendments in the CRPC also, uh, year by year one, then uh, how Supreme Court took note of everything that was also very valuable. Later on, uh, you were told about the Article 21 and uh, the importance of uh, this victim compensation in the various acts like consumer protection, women protection, you have given us full insight towards that also. And uh, Dr. Priya has very well explained about the uh, application of, and uh, you can say application and besides the provisions that are being applied in various states of India. So uh, that is a very uh, welcome step also. And I really, I thankful to you, Thank you so much for this wonderful insight towards the topic. It was taken in a very well manner. The guidance you provided during the webinar is very valued. I am highly grateful to you. And besides all this, I am thankful to the all organizers of the webinars also, and to Dr. Jyoti also, and to all the participants also here on Zoom. And today, we uh, are on live session also. Then I am thankful to them all. So thanks for hosting the webinar and been giving the opportunity to thank you and taking the Joshnasi session too. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, so thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Uh,